everyone, Heather from Burner Babies here, and today you're watching this video because you are getting ready to pick up your new puppy from us. So first, just something real quick. I really want to thank you for adopting from us. Um, if you've read through my story at all, you know that Burner Babies has been a dream of mine since I was a child. Literally since I was 12 years old, all I've wanted to do is raise Burner Babies. So um, thank you for adopting from us and entrusting me to raise your new baby. Um, I truly do believe that dogs are the best creation that God has ever made. And I, I also believe that I am put on this planet to be a mother, to not just to my two-legged babies, but to the four-legged babies as well. And I could not do that without you. So thank you very much for allowing me to live my dream every day. Um, it's an honor and a privilege. And again, I couldn't do it without you. So thank you very much for allowing me to live my dream every day. So uh, let's get started on why you're here today. And that is for me to just kind of go through the information about pickup day. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to jot them down. I'll be happy to go through them when you pick up your puppy or you can email them to me ahead of time and I'll be happy to answer them before you get here. So very first thing, when you get here, you're gonna pull into my driveway and me and your puppy will be waiting for you. So go ahead and pull up to the building and come on in. So when you get here, you're gonna be super excited, right? A lot of you have been waiting several months, usually a long time for this day. Your puppy, on the other hand, is very nervous. So they know that something something is happen, happening. These puppies are so smart, and I do mean so smart. So up until today, most of our activities are group activities. We play together, we do bath time together, we do a lot of our training in groups, uh, kennel training is done in groups, pretty much everything the babies do as you know a group, a litter, <clears throat> until today. So today, they realize that I'm taking their siblings one by one, but this time they're not coming back. So they pick up real quick that something is different. So I go and I get them. I give them a bath by themselves. They get blow dried by themselves. And then you come in. Now keep in mind, I'm a huge germaphobe, which I talk about in another video. So up until today, they've only met my family, my employees, and my vet. So now here you come a stranger. So now they're definitely thinking, Okay, something is definitely weird, right? Something is definitely going on. So when you come in, make sure you kind of come in calm with quiet voices. And this is really good for those with small children. So our puppies love kids. And you're gonna see that our puppies and your kids soon become fast friends. They're gonna be best friends. They're gonna be chasing each other around the yard. Um, but this first encounter is um, pretty important, you know, because they're so nervous. And so uh, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're going through your first day. So I try to tell people, you know, your puppy is getting ready to leave basically everything they've ever known their whole life. And even though it's only eight or 10 weeks, it is a short time. It is still their entire life. So imagine how scary that would be for you as, as a human, let alone as an eight week old, 10 week old puppy. And we ask dogs to do this all the time. And just, you know, they take it in stride because truly they are this amazing creature. But it's still very nerve-wracking. So just as they go through the, that transact or that transition into your home, just kind of keep processing. Yep, they just left everything they've ever known. It's a process for them. So when you come here, I send you home with a ton of information. And I do mean it is information overload and I have been in your shoes. So sometimes when I show up at the breeder, I'm like, yep, lady, just hand me my puppy and I want to get going. So I'm hoping that by doing this, I can kind of get ahead of the game, get your, your information while getting your puppy and making it a little bit smoother and maybe getting a lot more information in your hands um, beforehand. So I'm, I, what I've done is I've printed off every, the first page of everything that's going in your puppy packet. And so um, I'll show you what that looks like and what is in your packet. And like I said, if you have any questions, write them down. <clears throat> we can discuss them as they come up. So in your <clears throat> first, uh, in your puppy packet first is what I call your transition letter. It looks like this. It starts with the word congratulations. 
So in this, it just kind of talks about common questions that I've had over the years. I've been a breeder since 2006. So what it talks about is the transition itself, um, what depression looks like, potty training, kennel training, feeding, um, obedience training, kind of everything you can think of kind of compiled into a letter. So there's a lot of good information in here. It's about five pages long. It's definitely worth the read, so feel free to really read this over well. This one starts with the words, very important. So what this talks about is how I have seen vets take advantage of my puppy buyers. So 95% of vets are amazing, right? They want what's what is best for you and what's best for your puppy. The other 5%, I would say, I have seen do ridiculous things and should be questioned. So I just tell people before you spend a ton of money on anything, or if you're questioning what your vet says, you give me a call. You know your puppy better than anyone. You're with your puppy the most. You're with them, you live with them 24 seven. Sometimes vet need, vets need to be questioned. They don't always know everything. And so I don't care if it's two in the morning. I don't care if your puppy is now 10 years old. If you're questioning something, you pick up the phone and you call me. Your puppy's health is my number one priority, no matter what age it is. So vets aren't always right, I guess is my point. And sometimes I just don't want anybody taken advantage of. And that's what that handout is about. So the next one talks about how we feed. So we free feed, and this handout starts with the word bloat. So free feeding is you fill the bowl up and you keep it full all the time. The only exception to this is when you're kennel training and potty training, then you take food away at nighttime, um, which I explain a little bit later. So burners and burner doodles are known as large barrel chested dogs. They are prone to bloat. Bloat is very serious, it is life threatening, you don't always know what the symptoms are as they're happening. If you don't catch it in time, you will lose your dog. This is a very, very serious thing. <clears throat> Free feeding also prevents your dog from becoming overweight, which I know sounds counterintuitive. Um, eating just to eat is more of a human trait. It is not a dog trait. So if your dog knows when I go to the food bowl when I'm hungry and there's food there, there's always food there. They're going to eat when they're hungry and then walk away. Um, free feeding also prevents food insecurity and food aggression. So you could walk up to any of my dogs right now, my puppies or adults. You could stick your hand in the bowl. You could try to take the food away. You could pet them. Another dog could do the same. I do not have dog fights here over food. And it's because everybody knows when they go to the bowl for dog food, there's going to be dog food there. That I'm going to make sure that they have food. Um... You could have a toddler walk up to any of our puppies right now and do the same thing. Stick their food or their hand in the dog food bowl, pet them, take it away. Nobody cares. And it is because there is no food insecurity here. Um, dogs that are fed at a certain time, a certain amount, they tend to have food insecurity. They gobble their food. They have to hurry up and eat it right now. And that's because they're worried if they don't eat it all, there's not going to be any left. So it, it creates a mentality of eat now or starve later. That's the mentality of those dogs that are fed like that. I truly believe that every dog needs to be free fed. If you currently have a dog that is fed like that and you want to switch them over to free feed, um, there's I'm going to make another video of how to retrain your dog to eat like that. Um, I, I think it is better me mentally for everybody to be, every dog to be fed like that. Um, and I think it's healthier for the family too. You're never going to have to worry about if somebody comes over and accidentally touches your dog while they're eating, that there's going to be an issue. Or when you bring another dog into the home, if they're going to be, you know, possessive over their dog food bowl. So that's how we feed and that is how we recommend that you free, that you feed your new puppy. If you cannot or do not want to free feed, then I highly recommend that you tack their stomach because bloat is a very serious issue and it can be and is life threatening. Okay, moving on to something else. Um, this talks about dog food and it starts with the word, uh, the words dog food. So we feed uh, the Purina Pro Plan line. We actually feed our adults Purina Pro Plan Sport, the 2616 blend, and then we feed our puppies Purina Pro Plan uh, Focus. So this talks about a seminar that my husband and I went to. We were having um, a lot of 
dog um, hair coat issues and fertility issues, we were feeding a grain-free free diet for just a short time, maybe nine or ten months. And one day I looked at my husband and I was like, look, this has got to be the dog food, right? So this talks about what we learned at that seminar and why we really um, are really big advocates of the Pro Plan line and why we want you to feed Prina Pro Plan. So that's that. <clears throat> This is a lot of talking. <laughs> so the next thing we talk about is the vitamins, and this starts with Dear Puppy Buyer. So in the email that you just got from me, it talks about vitamins that I would like for you to purchase. I send you home with vitamins for enough for one week. Why do I do that? I do that because I really, really want you to give them those vitamins. So the vitamins that I give to you, you'll cut, a, cut them in half, and you'll crush them between two spoons, and you'll sprinkle it on their food. Why? So those vitamins that I'm recommending support the immune system and joints. That first week in your home is the puppy's most stressful week probably of their whole entire life. They're leaving everything that they've ever known and they're moving in with you to something completely unfamiliar. That's stressful. That, that would be stressful for anybody, let alone a baby. So those vitamins are going to keep your puppy's immune system nice and strong, nice and healthy. What happens without those? Potentially. Potentially, that's when parasites move in, when those immune systems get weakened, and that's when you get stress diarrhea. So if you can give those vitamins for that first week especially, those things usually stay at bay. You don't get those parasites moving in, and you keep that diarrhea at bay. So I strongly encourage you to purchase your own vitamins. However, please, please give the vitamins that I've provided for you, okay? The next thing in your handout, in your uh, puppy packet, is this. This talks about um, burner growth information. So if you're adopting a Bernese Mountain Dog from us, this will be in your puppy packet. So I was getting the phone call um, on a pretty regular basis of, hey Heather, I saw a burner at the dog park, the same age as mine, but mine's bigger or smaller. This handout talks about why that's completely okay and normal. And why that is, is because burners are known as slow maturing dogs. So a Bernese Mountain Dog does not actually fully mature until they're about two and a half or three years old, which is why our health guarantee is all the way through three years old. Um, so this talks about all of that. <clears throat> okay, next. This will be in your packet if you took advantage of any of our training, either the obedience training or the kennel training. So the top portion talks about our obedience training and how to keep up, with that, keep up on that at home. And then the bottom talks about the kennel training. So if you kennel train here, your puppy's food and water is taken away at seven. Um, they go to bed at 9 and they're woke up at 6 and they actually are usually woken up um, If your puppy has had any accidents in the last week, we will tell you that on an individual basis um, But normally everybody is accident free and sleeping all the way through the night uh, for the last week that they're here <clears throat> Everybody gets this one and this is called uh, puppy training now available. So this is for after you get home Let's say your puppy is nine or 10 months old and you just can't get a certain behavior under control. Um, I would say the biggest one that I hear is jumping. You call me up, hey Heather, I just can't get Jojo to stop jumping and it's really becoming a problem. Um, you could bring him here. The average is about two weeks. You could bring him here and you could give me a list of all the problems that you're having as far as behavior. Um, he won't quit jumping, he really pulls hard on the leash and he won't quit stealing food. So I would work on all of those behaviors while he's here. Generally, it is two weeks. Sometimes if um, he really is listening, he or she is really listening well, I can get it for less than that. Um, but I would say on average is two weeks to get a good solid foundation. You come back, you pick him up, I teach you all the things that you need to do to continue on that good behavior at home, and you pick up a much better behaved dog. Um, like I said, a lot of times I can get it done in two weeks. If, if they're really, really having bad behavior, it can take a little bit longer, but I would say on average it's about two weeks. So they're always welcome back here for training. So if you're picking up a burner doodle, that Bernie's Mountain Dog growth information will not be in your packet, but what you get, will get is this. So this is the Bernie's Mountain Dog versus uh, burner doodle handout. I said that backwards, but you get the point, right? So what this is, is most people are drawn to the Burner Doodle because of the Bernice Mountain Dog. And this just kind of explains the differences. Um, the biggest thing that I can think of offhand is grooming. And this just kind of walks you through what the big differences are and what to expect with the Burner Doodle compared to the Burner. <clears throat> 
You also get this handout, which is about your burner doodle. This actually tells you what you're getting as far as is your puppy an F1, an F1B, a standard, a mini, and then it talks about longevity at the bottom. I feel like this is a really good handout. So every puppy who leaves here also sees my vet before leaving. So you also get a health certificate. I did black out personal information. Um, your copy is pink, but um, it just says that my your puppy went to the vet before leaving and is nice and healthy. Every puppy also goes home with a health record. So this is important because I do not keep a copy of this. All the originals go home with you guys. So make sure you keep track of this. Um, so if your puppy leaves at eight weeks, they get one set of shots at six weeks. And if your puppy leaves at 10 weeks, then they get two sets of shots, one at six weeks and one at nine weeks. Everybody is dewormed every two weeks while they're here. But this, um, you'll wanna keep good track of this and then take your puppy to the vet uh, or take this to the vet with you when you go. Um, they'll write everything down and then, then you can lose this if you want. But make sure you keep good track of this, okay? Okay, I'm getting thirsty. <laughs> so I told you it's a lot of information, right? Okay, this is our health guarantee contract. So after you make your pickup appointment, um, I'm gonna send you a copy of this to read. It'll be tailored to your information. So your information will be up here, your puppy's information in the middle, and then how much you pay for your puppy down below. Please read through this because when you come, uh, you're gonna be asked to sign this. Um, I will keep your signed copy in your folder in your file here, and then you will get a signed copy from me in your puppy packet. You will also be asked to sign this. <clears throat> this is just basically a, um, a summary, I guess you would call it, of the health guarantee contract. So I like to say some things out loud before you sign it. And those three things are, you have to take your puppy to the vet within three days of getting him or her and then mail me something showing that your puppy was at the vet. That mail copy goes right into your file. The second thing is you cannot sell, rehome, or drop my puppy off in a shelter. If you can't keep your puppy for any reason, doesn't matter what the reason is, your puppy does have to come back to me. Um, I do not want any of my puppies in a shelter. That is very important to me. The third thing I like to say is that your puppy has to be spayed or neutered if you did not buy breeding rights. Uh, breeding rights are scrutinized a little bit differently and the screening process is different. So those are the three things I like to say out loud before everybody signs that. Um, so that's it. I told you it's a lot of information, but I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to write them down and bring them with you when you pick up your puppy. Or like I said, you can email them to me and I'd be more than happy to go through them and then give your answers and send them back. Um, just a quick little disclosure. Honest, obviously, um, all the things in this video are just my opinion as a breeder since 2006. I am not a vet. And so um, these are just my opinions based on my experience. Again, I'd like to thank you for um, adopting from us and entrusting me to raise your new puppy. Um, I hope it brings you as much happiness as my dogs bring to me. One more thing too, if you like and subscribe down below, you'll be notified anytime I make a new video. I have lots more coming, so I appreciate it. Um, I think I have, <laughs> maybe I have too much to say, who knows? But um, I do think that um, I have a lot of things to share that maybe my puppy people could um, maybe, maybe um, benefit from. Who knows? We'll see, right? So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in a couple weeks, and I look forward to introducing everybody to your new puppies. See you soon. Bye, guys.